In today's video, I am going to be talking to you about how to earn a decent living as a professional photographer. Once you've watched this video, you're going to have five implementable strategies that you can use in your photography business to help you generate more income and to build a more enjoyable and more reliable creative photography business. So let's get started. And um, the first thing you want to be considering when we're talking about you know earning a proper living as a photographer is what does a proper living look like for you? This is going to vary wildly from photographer to photographer. So what you want to think about is how much money does your business need to generate so you can survive each month? What's the figure you need to bring in to be able to pay all of your bills and your costs? So you need to go through your bank statements and to get a really clear understanding on what that figure is. And then I'm going to invite you to think about how much money you would like to make each month in order for your business to thrive. That is to make a profit on top of just paying your bills. We don't exist just to pay bills and we need money for fun, for reinvesting in our business, for travel, for new kits and for doing life. Our businesses should be our vehicles for doing life and not the other way around. So I highly encourage you to start to think a little bit bigger and work out what that figure would look like to cover your costs and make a profit. No starving artists here, please. We are allowed to make a decent and good living from our photography businesses. That is what I'm all about. So to do this, you need to get really clear on your personal and business costs that you have each month and to understand exactly how much money your photography business needs to bring in so that you really, you cover all of those bills, your car repayments, school fees, you know, medical insurance, um, subscriptions, any loan repayments, those sorts of things. We need to get really, really clear on that. And then get clear on what you'd like to be making on top of that. So to help you with this exercise, because it can be a little bit of an uncomfortable and unpleasant exercise to go through, I have prepped a really handy pricing guide PDF, which you can get hold of in the video description. Just click the link in the video description and you can go through and you'll get a download to help you work through all of your expenses and your costs. Um, and that will give you a foundation for how you're going to be pricing your photography work, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about just now. The second thing we need to consider with our business is who is your work for? Who is buying your photography? And to make a proper living from our work, we need to be really clear on who we're selling it to so we can make our marketing messages and the, the work that we're sharing really aligned with those what we would call ideal clients. And in my not so humble opinion, um, the best place to start with this, if you're a little bit stuck, perhaps you're a new photographer or perhaps you've been running a business for a while but you are literally spinning your wheels and you're feeling a bit stuck and fed up, is to think about the sort of work you would make if you weren't being paid. What would you go out and shoot for free? Um, for me, it's, it's photographing dogs, which is what my photography business is really geared up around. I have built a business around this niche of photographing dogs. I'm going to be talking a bit more about niches and specialist creative stuff in, in upcoming videos. But that's a really good place to start. And what really lights you up when you are, you've got your camera in your hand, what kind of work do you really enjoy making? From my experience, when you're really passionate about photographing a particular subject or a particular genre or in a particular style, if you follow that passion and make the work that really, really lights you up and really kind of the, the work with heart, you will generate income from that because the money will flow there. So it's a really, really good thing to consider is what work do you really want to be making and who is going to be buying that from you. Two very, very important considerations. Point number three is we have to do some marketing. We've got to get our work in front of the audience that is going to buy from us. People need to be able to find you in order to be able to book you. And I hear a lot of complaints from photographers who will say, I've got no clients, I've got no money, I've got no work, but actually they're not doing any marketing. You cannot sit around on your couch visualizing clients coming in and doing nothing else. You have to take some action to get the work made and to get the work out into the world. 
So in terms of your online marketing, that's going to look like having an up-to-date website with um, that you regular regularly share new work on, um, a website that's got a bit of search engine optimization done, so it's relatively easy for people to find you in a Google search. You're going to want a Facebook business page. You're going to want an Instagram page. Those are three things you can be doing online, and they can kind of work together um, in tandem. And then you might want to look at whether you can get your work into an exhibition, whether you can get your work on, on a wall in a coffee shop or somewhere that's offline that people will be able to see your work and connect with your work. You might want to look at leaving business cards in places that your clients hang out. So again, going back to point number two, we need to get very clear on who's buying from us so we can start to direct our marketing efforts so that our work gets in front of those particular people. You might also want to look at collaborating with other businesses who have the same clients as you. Could you do a style shoot? Um, could you work together with a bunch of creatives to, to make some new work that can be shared to a wider audience if it's shared not only to your platforms, but to the platforms of the other people who are involved in that style shoot? So there's lots of things you can be doing to, to make new work and market your, your business. Uh, posting weekly on a Facebook page simply isn't enough. So if you're doing that and you're hoping for results, you're not going to get them. So you've got to step up with your marketing. And it's important to make time each week to do some marketing because you'll find that when you consistently market your business, you will get consistent client bookings in. These things don't happen overnight. It's a process. So you need to just be consistent and keep doing the work and the results will show. Point number four is to make sure you're pricing your work correctly. And this means pricing your photography so that you cover your costs and you make a profit from each job that you do. Again, please refer to the pricing guide I talked about if you need some help with working this out. Your pricing should be based on your cost of doing business, which will be individual to you. You shouldn't be pricing your work based on what the photographer up the road is doing. Uh, often I'll hear, you know, photographers look at what other people in the area are doing and think, oh, I'm just going to undercut them. And it doesn't work. All that happens when everybody starts undercutting everybody else is we all end up on a long race to the bottom. And that's not a race I think anybody wants to be in. So make sure you have got your work priced correctly um, and that you've got your, your messaging um, teed up to those ideal clients that we've just talked about. Another, another way to make sure you are maximizing the income from each shoot you do is to not give all of your work away for a flat fee and to leave a little bit of room for clients to buy more from each shoot that you do. So that might look like selling extra digital files. It might look like selling prints and products. It might look like selling enlargements. Whatever that looks like, looks like for you, it's important we leave room with every shoot we do for clients to be able to spend a little bit more. We also want to make sure you're taking a deposit from every client shoot booking that you have and that you are asking for payment on time from your clients. Um, as creatives, we can be quite lax with collecting money up um, and all of these things. And what happens is people don't earn enough from their photography businesses um, because they've got a cash flow problem because we're just not collecting the money in promptly. But my experience, when you ask a client up front for, I need a deposit to secure the date, and this is the payment terms, and this is when I require the next payment by, 99% of the time I am paid on time. But if you don't ask for the money, you won't get the money. So you've got to put some boundaries down, and you've got to be strict, and you've got to manage the collection of your payments in order to keep that bank balance looking healthy. And point number five, the last one I'm going to share with you today, is to make friends with money. Um, we, often, we often hide from it. We're uncomfortable asking for it. We don't have any idea how much we're earning or spending, which again is where that pricing guide comes in. Um, and if we don't know how much money we're earning or spending, we don't know how much we need and we don't know how much extra we need in order to be able to build a business and actually start to save some money. So I'll invite you to set some financial goals and to really take control of your money, of your income and your outgoings. Budgets are totally boring. I hate them. However, if you want to build your photography business and you want to start putting some money into savings, you're going to have to get to grips with how much you're spending and maybe cut back a little bit if you can do. 
um, and start to allocate a little bit of money to go aside each month. But if you start to do this and you start to save money regularly and you start to manage your money better, before you know it, you will have enough money to buy that new camera or you will have enough money to invest in your, in your business, whatever that looks like, whether that's upgrading your studio, whether that's investing in a coach. Um, whatever that looks like for you, if you get to grips with your money and you start to take control of it, you will find you will have more of it and you um, will be able to do the things that you really want to do with your photography business rather than just scraping by and surviving each month because nobody, nobody wants that. Um, these are strategies I'm sharing with you because they're the exact strategies I have used in my photography business that took me from earning just about a thousand pounds a month and literally scraping by to generating consistent five thousand pound plus months with just my photography business. Um, these didn't happen overnight. It took me about six months of implementing um, the money management of my pricing, of getting to grips with my marketing. But when I consistently took action um, and persisted with the changes I was making, eventually I saw results. And I have got a totally different business now from when I first started doing this work. And I want the same for you too. I'm, I coach photographers and creators and I'm so passionate about helping other photographers to earn decent money from their work. Because the more, the more money you earn for your work, the more great creative work you can do in the world, the more of an impact you can have, the better your, the better experience your clients will have, um, you know, and that kind of those good energy vibes really do make um, our lives and the lives of the people that we work with much, much better. So um, it is super important, and I really encourage you to start implementing these strategies that I have shared. So that's it from me today. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up or a comment and remember to subscribe to the channel so you get updates of when new videos go live and I will see you next time.